Ladies and gentlemen. Boys, yeah, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up, what is good? The King of Lightning here today bringing you guys and gals Kuroashi Vin Smoke D. That's right. D. Sanji. If you didn't know, Or and I, we discussed like three nights ago. And he let me know that in fact it's Vin Smoke D. I was like, oh. My, my. Well, well. But he said that was going to be revealed later on the story. So I did spill the beans on that one. I do it. Listen, I'm a Sanji fan. Oda should know that when you're going to tell me that Sanji, it's actually Vince Smoke D. Like, come on, bro. Like, Oda. So your fault for telling me, but it, I'm still spilling the beans on that, <laughs> on that inside scoop. So when I see you in Japan, a few months from now, I'll get you some sake. We'll kill it up. And then <laughs> I'll buy you a good dinner. I promise you that. Okay. We'll make amends for this uh, goof. But <laughs> that being said, folks, Sanji time. This is Sanji's week, hopefully. All right? Us Sanji fanboys are like, yes. In some way, shape, or form, I think it's a yes. Even though, for me personally, I'm not a big fan of the rate suit itself, which I'll get to real soon. Sanji's going to be going in against Page One, who is a member of the Flying Fighters, the six top headliners of the Beast Pirates. I want to break everything down from the standpoint of the Raid suit to Page One himself, or potentially herself, for some folks say. And then, of course, there is the Raid suit itself, and then what should be what should be the case here when it comes to how Sanji can deal with Page One. I do want to say that the Raid suit itself is odd. I'm not a fan of it again, like I said before. Mainly because, number one, why? Why does it exist? Sanji was a failure, and potentially the German could have made the raid suit very quickly during Hokkaik Island, or it could be like his birthright, where by birth, these raid suits, these canisters were designed for the German children. So that is Sanji's potential birthright, that suit. Okay, maybe, that's a possibility. But again, you have to wonder, why would Judge make this suit in the first place? And then why would Niji, even under those circumstances, because what he said, why? The whole point here is to kind of separate Sanji from the rest of Jerma, considering how he doesn't have an exoskeleton and that kind of stuff. He's a human through and through. He has the same blonde hair as his mother as well as his father. Whereas the other German kids, they have their own multicolored hair, you know, red, green, pink, and because they're abominations, essentially. Their genes were successfully manipulated in some way, shape, or form. And you have to wonder, well, even though the thing is in code with his DNA, can he even use Rexu properly? Because again, he's a failure. There are things to wonder, honestly, when it comes to the race suit itself. But the first thing I do have an issue with is just why. Why is this suit here? The second thing is, from a power-up standpoint, Sanji's had very few power-ups over the course of One Piece. Very few. He's been more so of like a skilled, honed fighter who only relied on his legs as weapons. And that was really it. But if he gets the raid suit, it kind of makes him like Zoro in a way, which I'm not really a fan of. Because... Sanji, again, has been this strong, relying particularly only on his legs. He's hindered his hands because his hands are used for cooking. And he's incorporated Zev's Kenpo, his martial arts style, completely. So I really wanted Oda to kind of go on with the whole fire thing because that was now introduced. Hell's Memories, where he has a new transformation state. Where it's not just, okay, fire on the legs, but now his entire body is the covers of fire. And we saw what it did to Watatsume. He was able to one... With one kick, Watatsume's inflated body was engulfed in fire. And on top of that, when it comes to the strongest attacks, like for example, antimatter kick course, you haven't seen it once as of post times, not once. And that's one of his strongest attacks, if not the strongest attack that he has, the antimatter. So there were other options I felt like Oda could have gone when it came to Sanji's future power up that made a lot more sense when it came to his character. The raid suit makes less sense than going along the lines of, let's say, Hell's Memories or that kind of stuff and enhancing that. Because of, let's say, his emotional state influences his flames. Consider what happened in Hokkaik Island. He's even more riled up and therefore even more intense fire and, you know, so on and so forth. But instead, no, we're getting the German suit. I mean, potentially, this is maybe only a branch. And Odo will still touch about these other branches when it comes to Sanji's power scheme. But the raid suit itself is still, mm, again, it makes him too much, from a power standpoint, it makes him too much like Zoro. 
Sanji only had one power-up over the entirety of... Excluding, of course, the time skip. He's had one power-up. And that was... <laughs> However, over the course of pre-time skip, Zoro had... He had gotten three new swords over the entirety of that time skip. And each of these swords was a power-up. Mainly the Shisui one that he got midway during Thriller Bark. <laughs> And then when it came to the Sonic and Tetsu as well as Yubishiri or Yubishiri, I forget the name. Those two, he was testing out what they could do at Whiskey Peak, and he noted that these swords are different than his regular swords. So the swords themselves were buffs, and Sanji getting the raid suit is like a weapon buff, like Zoro gets during pre-time skip, and I'm not really a fan of that because, again, Sanji had his own way of doing things. So, so these are the two reasons why I'm not really a big fan of the raid suit. Again, too much like Zoro, and, and just why. I hope when it comes to the why, he'll answer that in greater detail later on in the story, because German's story, I think, isn't done yet. Now... When it comes to his combatant, page one. Page one, I'm thinking, is going to be a fairly, fairly fierce fighter. Again, he's top six among the headliners when it comes to the Beast Pirates. So he's the equivalent of a big mom senior officer. So Daifuku, Oven, Paro Sparrow, all those cats. From the Wiper Pirate standpoint, because the Yonko should all be kind of equal... They should all be kind of peers. So the Big Mom Pirates, the White Beard Pirates, the Beast Pirates, the Red Air Pirates, and so on, they should all kind of be equivalent of one another. So I think it's also a fair assessment to say that Page One will be, let's say, Vista and down. So I'm not saying that he's Vista level, but the Flying Fighters should be comparable to either Vista or Speed Zero or... Um, Water Buffalo, Adamus, whatever the guy's name was, and so on and so forth. Like, basically, Vista and down. Because you have your top three guys. So, Big Mom crew, Katakuri, Smoothie, Cracker. Done. Kylo's crew, King, Queen, Jack. Done. Whitebeard's crew, it should be, in theory, like in practice, it should be Marco, Ace, Jozu. Even though the second spot was open for a while... And knowing I fill that role as second division commander, which would indicate in a way that they're not necessarily like power based. But at the same time, Marco being the first division commander would kind of indicate that, well, they kind of are power based. So it's up to you. Like if you feel like Ace is weaker or stronger than Vista, then that's up to you. I would say that overall Ace should be superior. Could Ace beat Jozu? It gets wonky there. But I would say if you follow that same that same pattern, then the same thing can be said here. Among the Beast Pirates, this is the equivalent. The six flying fighters. So Page One should be at least as strong as Speed Zero, one of those guys from the Weapon Pirate crew. I won't say like Vista, but he should be at least around that group. Whether he's the weakest or the strongest of the flying fighters, he should be at least as strong as an oven, Daifuku, Paris, that kind of stuff. So, if Sanji can take care of this guy relatively easily, then now Sanji's all of a sudden, with the raid suit at least, he's going to be around, like, third commander level, which is going to be a huge jump in his power overall. Again, we're assuming that the raid suit is going to be a general power buff. But here's what we do know. So, getting on to the raid suit itself. Niji, Ichiji, and Yonji, they're not dove for users, but Reiju is. So her raid suit enhances the powers of her poison-based dove fruit. All right, fine. But Ichiji, Niji, and Yonji, they have no dove fruit powers considering how Reiju kicked Yonji into the sea and they just popped back up. He wasn't weakened at all. None of those three have any powers from Dove Fruits, but their powers come from the tech itself. We see that Niji is extraordinarily fast. Potentially light speed, but I won't go that far, right? Yonji has some weird mechanical arm wench thing going on. And Ichiji has some kind of weird red orb thing. Like, it's it, it's a strange thing going on there. But they have duffel like powers because of their raid suits. But also probably because of their lineage factors being manipulated and how they have these weird exoskeletons. That could play a role in that as well. So I do wonder if Sanji can use the raid suit properly, considering how he's a failure and he has the proper exoskeleton. I truly do wonder. But if he can use it properly, 
then what would Sanji's power be? I'm not too sure. I'm really not. I would feel like it would tie into his fire in some way, shape, or form. But then him utilizing fire-based stuff with his raid suit could be too much like Ichiji because he's sparking red. But then it's not really fire. It's like these weird energy orbs. So it's, it's kind of shaky there, honestly. So the raid suit itself does have unique properties when it comes to abilities. True. But the main thing here is what Sandy says when it comes to him won't getting hurt. When it comes to his identity, that can be a little bit wonky because... It could be as simple as him putting on the raid suit, change the identity. And page one, or let's say even, you know, Drake or Hawkins, if they come, they can't perceive who Sanji is. Because sometimes in some shows, you can slap on a very basic mask or disguise, and then no one know who the hell you are. You wear the same outfit as yesterday, but if you slap on something over your eyes, they don't know who you are. It's like, bro, like, wait. <laughs> some shows are like that. And so with One Piece, it could be the case where, okay, he puts on the German suit, and then he's just, okay, like a whole new, like a whole new guy now. It could be that simple. Or it could be the case where his suit comes with, let's say, a mask of sorts. Some folks are saying, well, it comes probably with something akin to the mask that he wore as a child. I don't like that idea at all. Because I don't see, like, even if it did come with some crazy powers, Sanji wearing that mask... I would assume brings up these vile, disgusting memories of his childhood. And I think it's only even more reason not to wear the suit at all. At all. Like, it could be something as simple as the goggles that Niji wears. It could be something like that, okay? That's fine. But if it's like a mask, like, again, like a full-blown helmet, like he wore when he was a kid, I think it's too much. I think it's too much, most definitely, and I think... Oda wouldn't do that when it comes to Sanji. At least I would hope not. Because, again, you have to wonder. Because Sanji's gung-ho. The way he's talking about this raid suit, it's almost as if, well, he's worn the suit before. And I'm not too sure why Oda would do that off-screen. Because that's a pretty important moment for Sanji's character to wear that suit. He doesn't want to wear it in the first place, so why did he wear it? I mean, here's the thing. Maybe once Luffy... And the crew separated because of the whirlpool that he was sucked into after they entered Wano Kuni. It could be the case where they fought against something or whatever. And then Sanji put on the raid suit for whatever reason. And then he found out what it could do then. You also have to wonder, when it comes to the design, if Sanji's so cavalier when it comes to you using the raid suit now, then it shouldn't be a dress or, like, some Reiju thing. It shouldn't be that at all because, again, he's like, yeah, like, you know, I'm going to end this quick. They won't find out who I am. I won't get hurt. Like, he's throwing up. But, yeah, like, absolutely, like, I got this. So, one has to wonder. One has to wonder. But I think the safest bet is Sanji's using this for the time being considering the circumstances. Again, he doesn't want to be identified. Okay, fine. So, there could be something there. But on top of that, he won't get hurt. The biggest thing, I think, with the raid suit is the durability buff. That, I think, is pivotal. Especially in a show like One Piece, where One Piece, having high durability means, I think, a lot. I.e. Big Mom, I.e. Kaido. Kaido kind of takes the damage, but at the same time, he may nullify it entirely. I'll put it all in the durability, honestly. Where the durability factor, I think, is very important. A guy like Whitebeard took bullet wound damage. <laughs> Sanji with the raid suit would probably have more durability than Whitebeard. And that sounds crazy, but again. Whitebeard took bullet wound damage. He took stab wound damage. Now, you can assume, okay, well, during the Ringford War, all these guys probably had hockey, and so they were, let's say, hockey-laced bullets. Okay, maybe, but we're not too sure. We're not too sure at all. But with the raid suit, we do know that they do block regular bullets. When it comes to candy-coated special bullets, all right, that's a different story. But when it comes to regular bullets and regular can fire, that kind of stuff, they don't get hurt by that because the raid suits have that innate durability. They can walk through that clean. So when it comes to not getting hurt, well, yeah, he has the raid suit on because it's, it's going to be a big durability buff. And then on top of that, when it comes to, let's say, fire, because we have, for some reason, a pterodon, like freaking King, 
he's immersed in fire. And then you have a guy like Holden, who's a lion smile user. He's breathing fire too. It's like, what? So, I mean, maybe, maybe page one can breathe fire. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like, why? Why can a lion smile user breathe fire? Why is there fire around this pterodon? There just is. And it's like, okay. So if page one can breathe fire, well, Sonic's gonna walk through that fire, like literally. I mean, it would already be fine, I think, if he wasn't regular, you know, Sanji. He, I think, does have a degree of heat resistance. But with the raid suit, yeah, he's going to walk through that. He's going to literally walk through those flames. Like, not a big deal. The biggest thing here for Sanji right now, I think, is going to be that durability buff. Where I think what's going to happen is that Pedro is going to attack Sanji. Sanji's going to eat those attacks. Eat those attacks. And then he's going to showcase the power of the Raid Suit from a durability standpoint. And then by then, he'll hopefully take care of Page 1 relatively quickly. That's my hope. But again, Page 1 is comparable to a Daifuku in an oven, a Pero Sparrow. A speed zero or above Adamus, all those guys, all right? Vista down, snacks down, whatever that pool of senior officers is, that's what page one should be comparable to. Otherwise, from the Beast Pirate standpoint, compared to the other compared to the other Yonko, it'd make no sense that the other Yonkos have like a group of fighters that are right below their top three dudes that are relatively strong as well, but the Beast Pirates didn't for some reason. Like that'd be kind of weird. They have to kind of follow the same scheme. Like, when it comes to Shanks' crew, they're a bit different because they're kind of like Luffy's crew. All right, fine. But the other Yonko's crew should follow the same model. But if Oda is hell-bent on making sure that Zoro and Sanji come the end of Wano Kuni or after Wano Kuni, that they are going to be around Yonko commander level, like at least third commander level, like on some cracker status, then it's now or never. And on a final note, before I end the video, so we're seeing the power for Sanji right now. That's the Raid suit. Now... The need eye is there, and that's that, that's Zoro. That's clearly Zoro. So like the good old days, where Zoro had like I think like four or five power ups. But again, if Zoro doesn't take on King, even though King's a flyer, which you would think, first of all, with the raid suit he can fly. Number one, because he has those weird bubbles underneath his shoes, and number two, he has a skywalk as well. Like you, you would think, like you know, if King, if Queen is a ground based person and King is a flying based person, even though King has a sword. He's a pterodon, so it's kind of like, and plus he's covered in fire. Mm, I don't know, like flight, that's not his kind of thing. So, like, again, one, <laughs> one would have to wonder, maybe Oda will switch it up. He said there's going to be different this arc, where things are going to be unpredictable this arc. He could flip the script and, you know, Sanji takes on King, Zoro fights Queen, Considering how King can fly and, well, Zoro can't. Unless it's going to be some weird thing where Zoro attains flight two. Luffy can fly. Sanji can fly. I guess Zoro... I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, that's one of a buff. If Zoro can learn flight two, goddamn. Again. Only time can tell. But the raid suit is a big durability buff. That's a very, I would say, a very important component when it comes to One Piece and overall combat ability. And if that's the case, with the suit, boom. Here's Zoro, here's Sanji. But with the Need Eye, I think that'll be the case, honestly. I think, ultimately speaking, with these two buffs, at the end of Wano Kuni, they'll both be around Yonko Commander level, at least third Commander level. And Luffy should be... Luffy, honestly, should be, like, Admiral level. Maybe. Maybe. But we see. So that's it. I'm going to catch you guys and gals later. Where do you stand when it comes to Raid Suit, Vin Smoke, Sanji? Be sure to rate the video. It is not that hard to do. I guarantee you that because I know that you all have a device called Zay Mouse You use Zay Mouse to click, 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 rate the video, to click, 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 subscribe, to click on that bell to join the squad. And of course, as always, feel free to comment in the comment section down below. Peace and have a nice goddamn day.